Good morning, you guys. Listen. <laughs> the tea is necessary this morning. So y'all may hear um Coach T little froggy voice. <laughs> I have been under the weather since Wednesday. Since Thursday. Um And so, I had to crawl pretty much to get to this place. But I said I had to get myself together. Praise Jesus, Lord help me. Um, sex with the chin. I had to get myself together to come on here and share this message. Good morning, and share this message with y'all. So I'm running like 15, 20, 30 minutes behind. <laughs> 39 minutes behind. But listen, praise Jesus, I made it. So I want to just say, excuse my voice. Listen, I didn't even go do my self-care time yesterday. That's how you know. It was serious. Okay, I canceled all my appointments I had yesterday. Um, and I was trying. I was trying real, real hard to like keep it moving i'm like i need to go and lay down and sometimes the body will let you let you know go lay down i was taking care of my son because he had not been feeling good for about a week and so it seemed like the day i took him to the doctor um and we left out of the doctor he got his medicine and everything i went to sneeze and i'm like what in the world so thank god it wasn't covid or anything like that but it's like that thing came on me right after we got him, you know, good. So it's just something going on. I think it's a change of weather and stuff or whatever. But it was not going to stop me, praise Jesus. I said, Lord, give me strength. Give me strength to come and speak to your wife today. Give me strength to come and do what I need to do. Business don't stop because, you, because you're sick, even though you have to take, sometimes take some time out and relax, okay? Um, but I do feel like God is a... Um, God is a healer. God is a healer. And he knows what we need and when we need it. And so, hey, here we are. <laughs> All right. So I want to come on this morning and speak with you briefly about this topic because it's necessary. It's necessary. I have encountered many wives who are struggling in this area. And I thought, I thought I'd just bring some clarity. I just bring some clarity. Um, I always try to share transparency with wise but i also take wise to the scripture um and try to back what i share with you in scripture because it is only through god god is our source and he is the only one who can help us on this journey and so i want to encourage wise today to not take offense <laughs> i think i said this last week too <laughs> not take offense to what i'm sharing with you but please understand that it is coming from a good place. It is coming from a place of experience. It is coming from a place that of understanding. And so what I want you to receive from this today is not an attack, but I pray that you will receive wisdom. I pray that you will receive wisdom. So, excuse me, like I said, we got to talk about it because it's necessary. Okay, we got to talk about it. All right. Sex with the unavailable or cheating husband. No is the emotional trap this is the emotional trap so many wives are struggling emotionally when it comes down to their broken marriages their um um unhealthy marriages they are struggling they are struggling and one of the biggest contributors to this is sex all right it is sex this is what keeps wives on this roller coaster ride in cycles, okay? This is what keeps keeps wives on this roller coaster ride in cycles. And so many wives have so many different perspectives and so many different views and um so many wives have different, you know, ideas or you know what this, you know, what it means and this and that or whatever. And listen, like I said, I'm gonna give you Bible, I'm gonna give you my transparency. You apply it to your life how it works for your life, okay? Um, you apply it to, for how it works for your life. One of the questions I ask wives who are making a decision to continue sleeping with their unavailable or cheating husbands is, 
are you mature enough to sleep with your husband in this condition? Are you mature enough to sleep with your husband in this condition? Okay, that's the question I always ask. That's one of the questions I always ask my wives. And the reason why is because maturity is required. Maturity is required if you're going to continue in that. Okay, maturity is required. Okay, and it's a required on another level. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that today. All right. Which is why I always encourage wives to seek God's direction when it comes down to sleeping with your cheating husband during that time of, you know, what you guys are going through in your, in your marriage. All right. So I'm going to say a quick prayer. And I'm going to share some scriptures with you at some points and we're going to be out of here. All right. Father God, we bless you this morning. God, I thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace and mercy. And Lord, thank you for your strength, God. Thank you, God, for getting me to this place because I was messed up. <laughs> yesterday but thank you jesus for getting me to this place where i'm able to come on and share your word god lord i pray that you will use me as your vessel to speak to your wife today god help me god to apply your word lord i pray for the wife who encounters this video and this message that she received from you today god i pray for confirmation and revelation god I pray for wisdom to be applied, God. I pray for knowledge to be accepted. I pray for understanding, God. And I pray, God, that the wife would take this message and go into action. Lord, we bless you in advance. I thank you. I pray over this message. May there be no backlash. God, I pray that you would cover me and your son, Jesus' precious blood. May your word go out and it does not return. And it do not return back board. As I pray and ask these sayings in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. All right. So. I always like to share my transparency, okay? I always like to share my transparency. And it seems like lately the Lord been like really <laughs> bringing up some old stories <laughs> from my past. I'm like, Jesus, where that come from? Where that come from? But I think it's necessary. I think it's necessary. So I want to share first when my husband was outside of the home and then second when my husband came back into the home. So, of course, when my husband was outside of the home, me and my husband, like I said, we didn't, we, we barely even spoke, okay? We didn't like each other. <laughs> we did not like each other. And I think once I found out that he was actually involved with someone, because at first I didn't, you know, I didn't think that that's what was going on. But once I found out that he was involved with someone, I was like, okay. Um, so us sleeping together was just not an option because we didn't even, you know, we didn't even talk. And I always say, I thank God. I thank God for that because I feel like God knew exactly what I could handle, what I was able to handle and what I wasn't able to handle. Because emotionally, emotionally, I was still very much, um, attached. Good morning. I was still very much attached to my husband emotionally. So to be sleeping with him while he was not in the home, knowing that he was outside of the home with someone else, that would have been a problem for me. That would have been a problem for me. Emotionally, I don't think I could have handled that. Good morning. Emotionally, I don't think I would have been um, mature enough to handle that during that time of my journey. So when my husband was outside of the home, we were not sexually involved. We were not sexually involved. So then fast forward to my husband coming back into the home. And so, of course, you know, when he came back into the home, things didn't, you know, go sour right away. You know, we was home a good year and a half, almost two years before things actually started to change. Um, and then I start seeing some of the things, you know, from the from the past. Um, and so it wasn't until those moments where I was like, OK, you know, God himself would ask me, you know, will, will, will tell me to, to share things with him. And I'll be like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'll be like, I don't want to do that because it, it didn't seem like nothing was wrong at those times. It didn't seem like everything was in a, you know, in a in a good place. And so I would be like, God, why you want to mess up a happy home? Like I don't want to, I want to mess nothing up. It seemed like everything was fine. But God would ask me, you know, to you know, ask him, you know, will you ever be, you know, satisfied with one woman, or you know, um, will you will you continue to be, you know, living the way that you live in, or you know, are you going to continue to do these things? And so the question I would be asking him is, it always, it always stirred up, you know, like foolery between us. And I'm like, I don't want to do this, Jesus. But the Lord knew what He was doing because shortly after that, things were revealed, things came forward, this and that and the other. And so it was during those times where I remember I was like shut down. Like, you know, I felt a certain type of way. So, I, of course, I, sh I shut down. So there were times when, no, we were here many, many months 
um, where we did not sleep together. We did not interact together. We did not, you know, we was not intimate with, with, with each other. Um, and then there were certain times where I know I would hear God tell me to put aside my pride and to go be with him and to go be with him. So there were times when, you know, we, we was not, I was like, don't touch me. I'm not going to touch you. This is what it is, whatever, whatever. But then there were other times when I heard God say to me, you need to go be with your husband today. Or you need to go be with your husband. And, I, and, and sometimes when he would say those things, I didn't know. Now there were also times when I used to ask and pray God, like, Lord, take this feeling away. <laughs> like if we're not going to be like that, I would pray and ask God to remove this feeling because I didn't want to be feeling this way towards him and we were not able to be that way you know um and god would not take the feeling away and i couldn't understand why i would always ask him like why <laughs> why would you not take this feeling away and i remember one time the lord shared with me that he didn't take the feeling away he said because he needed me to still connect with him emotionally he needed me to still connect with him emotionally and if i if he took the feeling away i would not be connected to him that way and i was just like oh my goodness so i said it to say it was times where it was a no-go for us. And then it was times where I specifically heard that because I was that person. I have always been that person where like the cheating for me was like, you know, done. I'm, I'm you know, throwing a towel. We, we, we done. We finished or whatever. Um, because of past relationships and because of what I had experienced, um, because of what I, you know, seen growing up. The, to have an adulterous relationship and to be cheating, that was a no-go for me. Okay, so that was a no-go. So for me, I was done, you know? Um, but it was through that hardness that I really felt God speaking to me and trying to and, and trying to mature me in, 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 in ways and areas. And I had to make sure that I was being led by him. All right? So I wanted to share that part with you first. All right? I always try to share my transparency with you first. So... So many wives are mesmerized by the verse that is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5, which says, Do not deny yourselves to each other unless you first agree to do so for a while in order to spend time in prayer, but then resume normal marital relationships. And this way you will be kept from giving, giving in to Satan's temptation because of your lack of self-control. All right? And what wives must understand, what my wives must understand is that verse is referring to a healthy marriage, okay? That verse is referring to a healthy marriage. That's not referring to an adulterous uh, 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 spouse. This is referring to a healthy marriage, okay? Where both husband and wife is on the same page, okay? Because you are married, yes, the marriage bed covers you. The marriage bed covers you. However, if your husband is cheating or deliberately separate himself from you. This does not, this, this verse does not, does not, um, it's not for that. Okay. If it has been a conversation between you and your husband, where your husband has said he does not want to be intimate for whatever reason, he don't want to be intimate with you. Um, I'm, I'm sleeping with somebody or, you know, whatever his, whatever his reason may be. Okay. Whether your husband and you are separated because your husband is outside of the home or whether your husband is separate you because your husband is inside of the home. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse five is referring to a healthy marriage covenant because so many wives feel like, well, the Bible says I'm not supposed to deny him of sex. The Bible says I'm not supposed to deny him of sex. Okay. Let me share this. Most wives are sleeping with their unavailable or cheating husbands because they believe that would keep they believe that would keep him or stop him from cheating or doing what he's doing on the outside. Wrong. <laughs> so wrong. It would not. When your husband is struggling with a sin of adultery or lust, the only thing that can stop him from his foolery is God alone with your prayers. That's the only person. That is the only thing that can stop him from his foolery. You, wife, having sex with him is not going to stop him from doing what he's doing. And this is why I feel like so many wives are out of order on a marital journey and why so many wives are, are stuck and trap into this 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 emotional trap because they are struggling in this area. Okay, sex would not keep your husband from running the streets and doing what he's doing. That would not keep him. That would not keep him. Okay, how do I know why I shouldn't be sleeping with their husbands when they are in act of adultery? We're going to read what the Bible verse says in Hosea. 
Okay, Hosea chapter 3 verse 3 says, Then I told her, you must wait for me for a long time. This is Hosea speaking to his wife, Gomer. Okay, we know that the story of Hosea and Gomer, the Lord told Hosea to go marry this, um, you know, this this prostitute woman who he knew was going to cheat on him. He knew was not going to be good for him. He knew he was um, she was not going to be healthy for him. God specifically gave him instructions to go and marry this woman. And so this woman did exactly what a prostitute woman would do. <laughs> she went. She laid up with other men. She slept out. She had um um she had uh children for other men. She did all these things. And the Lord told Hosea to go and get her. Go and get her and love her again. Go and get her and love her again. Okay. And so we go down to uh chapter chapter three, verse three, which says, Then I told her, You must wait for me for a long time. You must wait for me for a long time. You must not be a prostitute. You must not have sex with any man. And I will be faithful to you too. Okay? Listen, Hosea said, you have to wait for me. I'm not ready to be in this intimate relationship with you right now. I'm not ready to be sexually connected to you because there are some things that need to take place. There are some things that need to heal between us. There are some things I need to hear from God on, okay? When Hosea went to purchase his wife Gomer back to... to to go purchase his wife back, he told her she had to wait. They didn't just jump right back in between the sheets. Why? Because that man needed healing. He needed time to heal. He needed time to get through whatever he had to get through. He didn't just jump right back in the sheets with her. A lot takes place in the soul of a of a of a wife when her husband cheats. Okay? When your husband cheats, you have to understand there is a um Something damaging that is happening to you on the inside. Trust is lost. Um, a part of you feel, you know, it's, it's broken. Your heart is broken. It's a lot of different things that, that transpires. And so to think that you can just jump in between the sheets and just act like what he's doing or what he has did, it's just, you know, it'll just go away. That's not so much the case. Okay. That's not so much the case. And so many wives are on this emotional, on this emotional train because they're not allowing themselves enough time to heal and they're not being instructed by the Lord because there's a difference when the Lord instructs you versus when you're doing it on your own. All right. And so when you don't wait, an emotional entanglement takes place that can cause a wife to lose her mind pretty much it can really cause you to use your mind because the damage that's taking place when you go to the altar and say i do to a person you don't go to the altar expecting to having to deal with adultery you don't go to the altar expecting to have to share your husband with somebody you don't go to the altar saying okay i i do to you and whoever else you're gonna lay up with that's not what you go to the altar and sign up for and so when that happens you have to understand it is it is uh it's something in your soul is it's fractured something in your soul is broken and it needs to be healed it needs to be healed and the only way for that thing to be healed is if you allow God to heal it. But too many wives are trying to do the healing because they think, well, that's my husband. I'm just my husband. I won't say my husband. He's my husband. And that's right. He is your husband. But you still need to be led by the Lord when he's in this condition that he's in. Okay? There are many opinions about sleeping with your cheating or unavailable husband. Plenty of people have much to say about this. Okay? Um, many people have plenty of opinions about, you know, how a wife should or should not you know, sleep with their cheating or unavailable husbands. But one of the things I like to tell wives is to pay attention to your spirit man. Pay attention to your spirit. He will let you know. One of the reasons when um, I was trying to just be my husband on my own without the um, without the Lord, and I even feel like before um, my husband was getting ready to you know go all the way left. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I didn't have no hands on proof or anything, but. Something in my spirit, man, was grieved when me and my husband would be intimate. And I was always telling him, like, I didn't understand why I would get so emotional during that time. Like, we would be we would be intimate. And then I remember just, like, you know, bursting out in tears. And I used to be like, what in the world is going on with me? And he used to even be like, well, hey, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Sir, calm down, calm down. <laughs> you know? And so I could not understand that for many, many years what was going on, what was going on with me. And what the Lord brought to my attention was your spirit man was grieved because of the things that were taking place with your husband. Your spirit man was grieved because of the things that taking place with your husband. Like I said, I was unaware of these things. I was very unaware of these things. But my spirit, my spirit man was very, very grieved. Yes, it was not necessary. <laughs> yes. And so 
I was very, very grieved. Um, my spirit man was very, very grieved. So I always try to tell wives, pay attention to your spirit man. Pay attention to your spirit man. You have to understand when you and your husband come together, yes, it is a natural thing that's taking place, but y'all are coming together in spirit. Y'all also are coming together in spirit. Once you have, um, once you and your husband are married and y'all consider in this covenant, y'all are not just in a natural relationship. Y'all also are in a spiritual, y'all are in a spiritual relationship as well. And so your spirit man will speak. Good morning. Your spirit man will definitely speak. All right. And so in the beginning, maybe you were able to do this. In the beginning, maybe you were able to, you know, go on um, and keep, you know, being intimate with your husband and, and you know, everything is fine. Um, but as time goes on, the spirit man will begin to talk. Okay. And he will begin to talk because he is, you know, he He's being grieved by what's taking place. And so I think that's what, you know, what's going on with me for a very long time. All right. So let's go to first Corinthians chapter six, verses 16. And I want to share with you this reason why wives need to make sure that they're actually hearing from God before they're actually making a decision to sleep with their cheating or unavailable husband. Um, let's see. Verse Corinthians chapter 6, 16 says, Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in her body? For it is said, two, the two will become one flesh. The two will become one flesh. The next question then becomes, can a wife contract what, what or who the husband has been with? Can a wife contract what or who the husband has been with? Okay, when a husband... And why come together? They come together as one flesh. The same thing takes place, wise, when he is with someone else. <laughs> the same thing takes place when he is with another person. Okay, they become they come together in body, and they come together as one flesh. All right. And so, can a wife contract something from that husband? Absolutely, absolutely. If your husband is laying up with another woman, and then comes home and sleeps with you. It is now you, your husband, another woman. <laughs> you, me, and she. <laughs> it's all three of y'all, okay? <laughs> all right? And whatever that woman has going on, you are now part of that as well, wife. You are now part of that as well. So it's now it's not just you and your husband anymore. It's you, your husband, her, and whoever else she done been with, Okay? And this is what all these different spirits and these soul ties and all that kind of stuff comes in contact with, okay? That includes body, bodily influ, um, fluids like STDs, vaginitis, uh, vaginal and bacteria infections, UTIs, you know, all the kind of stuff is coming together, okay? Yes, yeah, soul ties. You are encountering all different types of things when you make a decision to lay with your husband um, when he's in this condition or he's in this state of adultery, all right? Emotional entanglement is not just limited to a soul tie, even though it is part of a soul tie, but it is a evolving spirit. Um, it is evolving spirits that your husband has encountered with different women. So you're not just saying, okay, I'm just sleeping with my husband because that's, that's my husband. He's my husband. Yes, he is your husband, but your husband is cheating. <laughs> and your husband is laying up with someone else. And your husband is doing these types of things. So you have to understand, you are taking a risk. You are taking a risk when you make a decision to sleep with him and you're not being guided and directed by the Lord. You are taking a risk. You are taking a risk, wife, okay? You are taking a risk with your with your health. You are taking a risk with your uh with your soul, you're taking a risk with your spirit. You are taking a risk when you are making a decision to sleep with your husband, knowing that he's in this condition and you have not heard from God. Okay. Um, you think, oh, it's just me and my husband. And like I said, it's 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 all three of y'all. <laughs> it's all three of y'all and all the spirits that's involved. Okay. Um, it's an ongoing cycle until someone cuts it off. Until someone cuts it off. A lot of times wives don't even understand the psyche that's taking place of what's going on. You don't know why, okay, all of a sudden you was fine, and then all of a sudden your husband he goes back to his adulterous life and he goes back to living a life he has been living or whatever. Now you all messed up in your mind, you trying to figure out what's going on now your emotions all over the place because you think you thought that you and him was back together and y'all was in this good place and that's not even what it is that's not even what it is you gotta understand for a woman 
sex is more emotional. It's, it's, it's more emotional. But for a man, it's, you know, it's, it's completely different. He can sleep with you, her, 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 and her, and be, you know, whatever. But for a woman, it's more of a emotional. It's a, it's a, it's an emotional connect. It's emotional connect. And this is why so many women are on this emotional cycle and they can't get off. <laughs> They're on this emotional cycle and they can't get off. All right. Um, unless the Lord gives you the okay to sleep with your husband, I would encourage, I would encourage wives, I would encourage wives not to go this route, okay? Now, there are some times when God would instruct the wife to sleep with her husband. There are some times, like I said in the beginning, where he would instruct the wife to sleep with her husband. Let's read what 1 Corinthians six seventeen says. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. And this is why I'm always, 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 always pushing the wife to make sure that you are spending that time with the Lord. Good morning. Make sure that you are getting that that, that time in with the Lord. Make sure that you are in a good, healthy place with the Lord. Because when you, wife, are in a good, healthy place with the Lord, listen, the Lord will speak. He will guide. He direct. He will give instructions. He will let you know exactly what you need to do. Okay? With God, it's all about the timing. Good morning. With God, it's all about the timing. And that's why, once again, you need to be operating and following his instructions. There are times when God will ask the wife to go and be with her husband. But you have to understand, that is the time that God has given his divine protection for you to do so. Okay? This is why you want to get instructions from the Lord if or if not, you're supposed to do these things. Because when God is in it, you best believe you have his divine protection over you. And regardless of what he's doing with the other person, and regardless of what this other person got going on, regardless of any of those, those different spirits and things, you want to be instructed by the Lord. Because when the Lord says, go and be with your husband, knowing that your husband is doing these things, you have to understand you are now protected. You are now protected in a different way. What many wives mess up is when they go and they do it without first hearing from God. This is this is how it goes. However, God will meet the need of a wife. He will meet the, the need of a wife. But you have to allow him to order and instruct you. You have to allow him to order and instruct your steps and allow him to do just what just what that is that he that he and only he can do. All right. How do you know when you need to sleep with your cheating spouse? How do you know when you need to, when you need to um when you when you how do you know when not to sleep with your cheating spouse? If you know that your husband is in an adulterous relationship, <laughs> if your husband is living outside of the home with a with the adulterous woman, if your husband is inside of the home and has told you I'm sleeping with someone else, okay? This is when you know that you should not be sleeping with your husband. You should not be sleeping with your husband. How do you know when you should sleep with your unavailable or cheating husband? When the Lord instructs you to. Period. <laughs> when the Lord instructs you to. And this goes back to my question I asked in the beginning. Sometimes you can know exactly what your husband is doing and the Lord will instruct you to go and be with your husband. Okay? He will tell you to follow these instructions. He will tell you to do this thing. First Samuel chapter one, verse 19 says early the next morning, they arose and worshiped before the Lord and then went back to their home at Ramah. Uh, e e I can't say this name, Jesus, Hannah husband, Hannah husband made love to her and the Lord remembered her. Hannah husband made love to her and the Lord remember her. Now listen. Hannah knew her husband had all these other different people. He knew, he knew, he, she, she knew that he, he was, he was, um, sleeping with Pania. Is that her name? I think Pania. He knew that she, he, um, he was sleeping with Pania. He knew that, you know, Pania was the one, you know, uh, um, having babies for him. She already knew these things. She already knew these things. Okay. But the Bible says that the Lord remember her. The Lord remember her. The Lord told, instructed, uh, uh, her to go and be with her husband. He instructed her to go be with her husband, even though she knew her husband was sleeping with another woman, even though she knew her husband was with another woman. He instructed her to be with, to be with her husband. And in, in, in her obedience to that, a baby, uh, she was able to um, um, have her, her child, Samuel. She was able to produce her, her, her child, Samuel. So I say that to say when you are allowing God to instruct you, wife, and when you are allowing God to um, show you the ropes and show you how to go on this journey, 
you would never go wrong with his instructions. When God tells you, hey, this is how it's supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to go. I want you to go and lay with your husband today. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. That's when you do it. But where so many wives mess up at is when they make a decision to do it on their own. Like I said, I've, I've, I've coached and had encounters with different wives where there have been times where I know uh, God has specifically told this wife, Yes, go and be with your husband. But you have to be always in communion with God and knowing when and the timing, when to turn that off, when to keep going, or when not to do this at all. You have to make sure that you are in communion with God, wise, in order for you to continue on this path. And so I want to just encourage you. I want to just encourage you to use wisdom, to apply wisdom in any circumstance. And if you're not sure, if you're not sure, if you're not sure how to do that, I want to encourage you to sign up for your consultation for your wife consultation um i had a i had a, a one wife encounter where you know um where she basically said that you know she thought she was supposed to do this she was she thought that she was supposed to do this and i and it hit my soul so because i remember going to my pastor i remember going to my pastor and i remember saying like you know dude <laughs> what is going on with me like i'm 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 forgiving him and, and i thought as long as i forgave him and and you know I would be able to still be intimate with him and, you know, I'll be good. But I am not good. I am not okay. Like, so what's going on? I know that adultery is my exit out of my marriage. I know I can exit out of my marriage, but I'm, I'm making a decision not to do that. I'm making a decision to stay in my marriage. So I have forgiven him. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward. Why am I still feeling like this? Why am I still feeling like this? And I remember that pastor telling me, he said, because you feel like you are obligated to still be with your husband intimately and you haven't given your, you haven't given yourself a chance to heal. You do not have to be with him intimately right now because he has violated the marital covenant he has he has violated the marital bed and so because he have violated the marital bed you do not you are not obligated to be with him intimately and so many wives feel like they are obligated to still be with their husbands intimately because they feel like i gotta have sex with him because if i don't have sex with him he's gonna have sex with another person no if you're gonna have sex with other person i mean your husband is not completely healed and delivered himself yet there's nothing that you can do about that okay so i would just want to encourage wives listen if you are struggling in this area if you are unsure if you're supposed to be sleeping with your husband not sleep with your husband or i'm sleeping with him but i don't really feel comfortable sleeping with him or you know i want to sleep with him but we're not sleeping together if you have questions about that if you have questions about that i want to encourage you guys to sign up to sign up for your consultation all right to sign up for your consultation you can do that at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com all right that's www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com so many wives are struggling emotionally emotionally because they are on this cycle they're on this roller coaster ride they're doing this over the well i forgave him but he's still doing this thing so i you gotta know when to cut that off and you gotta know when when to hear from god and you gotta you have to be in in god's time and let god show you how to go and let god show you how to do this thing all right sign up for your consultation at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com listen it is self-care saturday it is self-care saturday I hope you guys do something that you enjoy doing today. I hope you guys prioritize yourself. I know it's the what, Memorial Weekend, Memorial Weekend. So everybody is getting, you know, a pool side ready, barbecue side ready. Listen, be safe. Do something that you enjoy doing. And I will catch you guys on the other side. All right. Talk to you soon. Blessings.